Hey everyone, good morning. So um, it's July 13th, 2019 at 11.11 11 in the morning. And you'll notice that I don't have, you know, my special lighting or anything. Um, and that it's, it's just me. Um, it's just me in my raw state. Uh, not that I'm trying to be anyone special when I have my nice lights. It's just like better lighting than this shit that's going on now. Um, but I'm going to make a video that could be potentially really hard for me given the state that I'm in. Because uh, I'm in a really raw, vulnerable state right now. Um, but I want to talk about it because it's not talked about. Because a lot of the things that I talk about on my channel are not talked about. So, I think kind of, and for those of you that watch my videos, I say this all the time. Uh, for those of you that don't watch my videos, I say this all the time. I don't plan out what I'm going to say. I just kind of word vomit. Um, so I don't uh, necessarily know what I'm going to say. Uh, I don't necessarily have a point to what I'm going to say. But the general gist of what I want to say is... So I struggle with a lot of mental illness, um, and specifically pertaining to the reason why I made this video today is this past week, so it's Saturday, on Monday I had a, I'm going to take my glasses off, um, it's just not clear, I had a extremely disturbing um, experience with a panic attack. Um, that was based off of a trigger from a TV show that was almost an exact reenactment of uh, one of my traumas that caused me to have PTSD because I have a couple of them but um, I'd say this is one of the most visceral uh, reasons why I have PTSD um, and it was mirrored on a television show um, and within, honestly, a minute, I began having what ended up being a 20-minute panic attack and was within my top three worst panic attacks that I've had, uh, even though this trauma happened um, four years ago. And I'll just say, um, even though I hope that no one would ask, but you never know, I will ask politely that nobody asks what my trauma is. Um, you know, I hope people have tact, but just out of respect for me, please don't ask what my trauma is and what uh, caused me to have the panic attack. Um, but, um, so that happened on Monday. And it was a really terrifying experience because I felt completely, completely out of control during this episode. Uh, things were happening to my body that have never happened before during my panic attacks. And it was just really fucking scary. And I even had my boyfriend here while it was happening. Um, so I wasn't alone, thank God. That would have been a whole nother layer. I can't imagine how scary that would have been. But so that happened on Monday. I have therapy two times a week. I have therapy on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, I went to bed very late. I went to bed at like 3 o'clock uh, on Monday night or like Tuesday morning, depending what kind of person you are and how you like to quantify time. Um, and I uh, went to therapy um, at 12 o'clock completely dissociated. I got to my therapist's office and I was crying and just a complete mess and explained the situation and explained what had happened and it was just it was horrible um it was absolutely horrible spent the rest of the day sleeping I think I slept for 16 hours um and then on Wednesday I have therapy at 2 so I believe I slept up until my appointment um, 
So again, I slept a really, really long time, which in the psychological community is called hypersomnia, which means oversleeping. Um, and then when I got to that therapy appointment at two o'clock, I was once again dissociated. And for those of you that don't know what dissociation is, um, another word that you might associate that with would be um, catatonic, um, which basically means um, unresponsive. So for me, when I'm dissociated, that looks like I am completely unresponsive. Um, I have a blank stare on my face. I um, am unable to talk. Um, sometimes I'm not able to move. I can't communicate with people. When I was having, I forgot, I had another panic attack on Tuesday night, so I had the big one on Monday. Then I had another one on Tuesday night, and because when I'm dissociated, um, I'm usually unable to speak and I'm so frozen. Luckily, I know sign language and I'm teaching my boyfriend sign language. I was somehow able to sign. Um, I was able to like fingerspell, like this is ASL, ASL, American Sign Language. I was able to spell, um, just fingerspell what the dream was about. Um, and I was I only had to spell out a couple letters and then he knew what the trigger was um but yeah usually I'm not able to talk and I have a video uh about what dissociation is and I actually have a very raw video of me when I am dissociating um so I will try to remember to put those links in the description because those are really really informative and I think at this point they have almost 7,000 views because they're important to know. Dissociation isn't talked about it, even though it's really, really common. Um, so anyway, uh, by the time I got to therapy on Wednesday, uh, I had been fine all day. I, I did my hair. I got a haircut, but then I ended up talking about the trauma again. I was describing it to my dad. Um, and then I just kind of shut down again. I had to take an hour-long subway train to get to therapy, and by the time I got to there, I was gone. My therapist was trying to do things to get me active, to try and make me move around, to squeeze my hands, to put my hands above my head, to shuffle my feet on the ground, and I could barely move. I honestly, she was trying to get me to rumble my feet on the ground, and I could barely move. Um, I could barely focus my brain to put my hands out and to squeeze them. I think she maybe had me do that 10 times and I just couldn't do it. I was paralyzed. Um, and this is all, these are all symptoms. This is all an offset of my PTSD. Um, so now that I've explained for eight minutes how I've been, so that was on Wednesday. So... Thursday, then on Wednesday, I slept some more. I don't remember Thursday. I literally don't. I honestly don't remember Thursday. I don't remember what happened. Yesterday was Friday. Uh, I happened to have an appointment to see my psychiatrist. But I don't remember what happened on Thursday. Basically, I've just been in an unresponsive blur. The reason that I'm making this video eight minutes in is the fear and the inability to be able to reach out and say, I'm hurting, I need help, um, I'm really struggling right now, I need you. I would say I have three really good friends in my life and I haven't talked to any of them this week. None of them have reached out to me. I haven't talked to any of them and it'd be really nice if some of the, if they would text me and just make sure that I'm okay. Like even just a hi, hello, what's up, you know? Um, but none of them have said hello to me. Maybe they're going through their old, their own things. I don't know, but 
nobody has checked in on me to say hello. And I, you know, that's not like us for at least two of my friends. One of them I don't talk to that often. So that's like, that's not that big of a deal. But two of them I talk to at least every single day. Um, so it's a little frustrating and concerning, I guess, to not be able to talk to my friends because I'm in the state and psychological place where I'm hurting bad enough, but I'm not also in the place where I'm able to reach out and tell my friends just like, I guess, willy-nilly what's going on. Um, because things are so bad. I live with my boyfriend, he's here, but, um, and you're probably sitting here asking, well, why should it be their responsibility to know your mental health? Well, it's not. But kind of the point of my video is this. If you have a friend that has mental illness, I think it's kind of important to just kind of have a radar have a radar of how they're how they're doing you know have those check-in texts of just hey how you doing especially with someone like me if you're on that daily text grind and you suddenly start to not hear from your friend maybe some flags and some alarms should start going off and reach out to them and make sure that they're okay because I'm telling you that I've been in this position more times than I can count where I've been hurting so much and just bleeding and I have not been able to just reach out and tell people that I love so much that I am hurting. So when you start to maybe realize in your own life that people are starting to drift away, reach out, send a text. Say, hey man, haven't heard from you. What's up? How are you doing? How's work? And then maybe that person will be able to open up to you and say, hey, I'm not doing so well. Maybe they won't. I don't know. But that's also just kind of a thing as being a human and being mindful of other people's feelings because we all get so wrapped up in our own lives and and everything is so central to ourselves and everything has to do with us, us, us. And sometimes we don't worry about the needs of other people. But when you think about the nature of mental illness and the sad realities of suicide, if I'm hurting that much and let's say I'm not reaching out to you and we're not talking and I'm holding everything in, that could be a life or death situation when people aren't realizing, especially when there are cries for help being posted. If your friend is starting to post really dark stuff online, if they're starting to post you know, dark memes or something, or really sad, like, Facebook statuses or something, because I'll admit, I've been posting some stuff on the internet that's been, you know, a little bit Debbie Downer that's been cries for help, and none of my friends have heard my cries for help because nobody's reached out to me. And luckily, I'm not suicidal, I'm not at that point, but I just think it's important to be really aware and... Just look out for each other. Maybe that's my message, is look out for people and just be aware. You know, there's always that quote, like, you never know someone's struggle or whatever, the, you know, whatever. That's worded in so many ways. The person next to you, you don't know their struggle, whatever. But I'm just saying, from my personal point of view, and I know a lot of people that struggle with mental illness, all you want to do is reach out 
and ask for help, but sometimes that is fucking impossible. So I just ask that if you have someone in your life that struggles with things, that you pay attention, notice when they're not texting you, notice if they're starting to not shower, if they're not eating, if they're not whatever. Because maybe by you realizing those things, that could be the difference between saving a life and losing a life. hope this video wasn't too depressing but uh I just really wanted to make it because yeah it's hard as strong as I am uh you know being able to make this video and inform you guys I'm still not able to reach out and ask for help sometimes when I need it because mental illness can be so isolating so care for each other love each other tell people that are important to you that you love and care about them because life is so short and i've learned that lesson in more ways than one as well so all right guys have a good day